the Chevrolet program starring Jack Benny with Frank Black and his orchestra. <laughs> Black opens the program with Charlie's Home. Throughout the United States, a series of big, colorful posters are going up on the billboards, reading, Every minute, someone buys a new Chevrolet. Watch for these new signs, my friends. And bear in mind, when you see them, they're signs of better times. They're signs of bigger business for the world's largest builder of motor cars. Also, they're sure signs that the one best buy in the low-price field must be Chevrolet. America certainly wouldn't buy Chevrolets at the astonishing rate of one every minute, unless Chevrolet were the one best buy at its price. And that's exactly what it is. The only car in its field with a Fisher body. The only one with Fisher no-draft ventilation, with a cushion-balanced engine mounting, with a time-proved six-cylinder power plant, a starter rater, an octane selector, and no other full-size car in the world is so economical on gas and oil and upkeep, or so dependable. In view of all these things, do you wonder why every minute someone buys a new Chevrolet? Jack Benny. Hello, some more. This is your New York correspondent, Jack Benny, the Earth Galloper, coming to you with all the late news reports through the courtesy of the Weekly Watch, the news that brings out all the dirt. Okay, Frank, let's go. Thank you. Uh, Chicago, Illinois. World Fair gets off to good start with many notables arriving daily to represent their respective countries. Sam Insull will represent Greece. Jimmy Walker will represent France and Black's orchestra will represent Russia. Scotland sends Harry Lauder, C.O.D. Jack, Jack, another wire just came. All right, what is it, Mary? Quick. World Fair, Chicago. Molly and Dietrich just arrived, representing Pennsylvania. Mary, go away, will you please? Mm -hmm. Bombay, India. Mm, more Gandhi news. Mahatma Gandhi finishes 21-day fast and is now wearing a cigar band. <laughs> when last seen, he was mistaken for a panatella. Babylon, Long Island. Man and wife discovered here with 16 children. Short found dead on soup. <laughs> Overworked, eh? You know. Ah, special cable dispatch. Frank Buck and Jimmy Walker will sail for America shortly. Buck will bring them back alive, and Walker will bring them back a wife. Glasgow, Scotland. Harry Lauder also sailing for America. Local citizens give him big blowout by putting tack in his rear tire. Pretty good for Scotland. And now, folks... We have also added a want ad column to our paper as we cannot exist on circulation alone. So take down these addresses if you are interested. Traveling salesman wanted. Must be familiar with traveling, salesmanship, farmers, and farmers' daughters. Address box 482, this paper. Wanted, 30 chorus girls. Apply Minsky Theater, New York. Wanted, three more chorus girls. Apply to Melton, Black, and Benny. <laughs> Got you in on this, Frankie. For sale, baby grand piano by lady with electric attachment. What's that? <laughs> Girls wanted to knit sweaters for Kat, Bloomberg, and Riley. Hmm, the boys must be cold. Mm -hmm. Woman 55 will trade a Pekingese dog and a canary for slightly used husband. Realizes mistake. <laughs> Address RFD4, Pump Handle, Ohio. Female help wanted. Good secretary. If good looking, don't have to be so good. Jack, can I read one now? Go ahead, Mary. Wanted. Good master of ceremony for Chevrolet program. Graham, wanted Howard Claney to say something about Chevrolet. Oh, yes, you will find that Chevrolet saves you on oil, gas, service Play, Frank, charges, don't, don't wait for this. Junior Play, Junior don't wait, don't wait. Play, Frank.
Mr. Black, thank you. That was uh, My Darling from the Vanities, played by Frank Black and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> we continue with our penthouse murder that was started last Friday. You all remember our terrible murder mystery last week? Well, it's terrible this week, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who killed Mr. X? <laughs> you remember, folks? Mr. X was killed in his penthouse a week ago tonight between 8 o'clock and the bathroom. And the only clue found was a hot dog running away from a stand in Coney Island. You may also remember that during the trial, we were unable to place the guilt where it belonged. Garbo had to go home, Mae West had a date, and the other prisoners were not interested. So it still remains a horrible, unsolved mystery. Who killed Mr. X? I said, who killed Mr. X? Oh, pardon me. Yes. <laughs> Watch those cues. Huh? Now, uh, what could have been the motive for this crime? Let us analyze it. Mr. X, Mr. X was the landlord of three apartment houses. So you see, he had no enemies. He lost every cent in the market. His wife was pressing him for back alimony, and he had incurable rheumatism. So there was no reason for suicide. Now, what was it? How old was he, Jack? Ninety-five. Then he did not die of old age. Neither will you, Mary. <laughs> uh, what did he have to suffer the night of the crime? Liver. Then it couldn't have been a heart attack. No, Mary, it couldn't. A pipe was pulled out of his mouth, and he was examined carefully. What kind of a pipe? A gas pipe. Oh, well... <laughs> Oh, well, a little gas never hurt anyone. I know. Well, anyway, folks, we've had two detectives working on this case. Detective Nelson. Detective Nelson, you've been out on this case a week. Yes, sir. What have you found? I found a place where you can get a sandwich and a glass of beer for a nickel. <laughs> Mary, take down the address, but that doesn't help solve the mystery. Detective Claney, what did you find? I find that every minute of the day, someone buys a Chevrolet. Well, now we're getting someplace. After all, that's what we're here for. Did you find anything else, Claney? Yes, but the Chevrolet has the Fisher no-drop ventilation. That's great. Now, all we have to find out is who killed Mr. X. Jack, why not put it in the hands of Sherlock Holmes, who understands crime? You're right, Mary. We'll get Sherlock Holmes, the man who sees all, knows all, and plays the fiddle. Hey, Jack. Jack, wait a minute. Yes, Jimmy? I hate to interrupt your mystery, but do you mind if I sing my song now? <laughs> oh, no. Pardon me, Jimmy. I... Go right ahead. Uh, what are you going to sing? Huh? Frank Lehar's uh, Frasquita Serenade. I know that, Jimmy. I just couldn't pronounce it. You know, play Frank. Play. <laughs> In the silence of the night, when the moon is shining. The Prestigious Serenade, sung by James Nelson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with our mystery and take you to the residence of Sherlock Holmes. Hmm, hmm, hmm. A quarter of seven. <laughs> Only one more hour until a quarter of eight. And just an hour ago, it was a quarter of six. Mm-hmm. What a strange world. Mm-hmm. Answer that, Mary. I'm not in. Hello. Hello. You want to speak to Sherlock Holmes? Yes, this is Sherlock's home. But Sherlock isn't home. He's working on a case right now. Yes, he's on his last bottle. <laughs> what is it, Mary? It's about that penthouse murder of Mr. X. They want you to start working on it at once. Oh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I was expecting that case. Tell him I'll take it. Hello. Mr. Holmes just came in and said he'll take the case. Tell Mr. X not to worry. Goodbye. Mary. Mary, call in Dr. Botson. We have work ahead of us. Uh, oh, Mr. Sherlock, uh, I hate to ask you this, but uh, can I draw five shillings to payday? <laughs> That's elementary, Mary. I get it, Sherlock. Sherlock to you. <laughs> call, uh, call Dr. Botson. Dr. Botson, the boss wants you. Okay, I'm coming. Well, Sherlock, what's new? Watson? Watson, we have much work ahead of us. Mm-hmm. By the way, you've been eating herring. Is that right? Sure. But tell me, Sherlock, how did you know it? That's elementary, Watson. Besides, I can smell it. Sherlock, you're a genius. 
Watson, you're a lit box. <laughs> you know, Watson, you're really supposed to be an Englishman. Uh, when I say, Mr. Holmes, I'll try, you know. Uh... Mm -hmm. I like the other dialect better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you want? Watson, mm -hmm. we have a strange mystery to solve. Mr. X was killed in his tent house, and we start working on the case today. Mm -hmm. All right, but before we start, why don't you eat something? You're always working. Now, I just made some nice homemade soup. What kind of soup? I made some chicken, vegetable, and noodle. Which do you want? Quick, Watson, the noodle. <laughs> mm -hmm. We leave. We will leave, Watson. We leave for the Empire State Building in ten minutes. The Empire State Building. Pack your bag and hand me my violin. I've got a lot of thinking to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I must think. They laughed when he picked up his violin, but when he started to play, they screamed. Quiet, Mary. Quiet, I must think. I must think. Come, Watson. A thought just struck me. We must get to the Empire State Building in a jiffy. Why in a jiffy? My several will get us there just as sleep. And much safer. At times, Watson, you show signs of intelligence. You have just heard what these two famous detectives have said about the Chevrolet. It is quick, safe, and dependable. That's elementary, Claney, and get out of my study. Come, Watson, we must hurry. And by midnight, we will find the murderer of Mr. X. Hey, Lack, you're uncanny. Watson, you're nuts. Come, let us away. <laughs> devil. And now we take you to the lobby of the Empire State Building where we meet Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Tell me, sir, like, why did we come here to the Empire State Building? What has this got to do with the murder of Mr. Hex? Watson, I'm surprised at you. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. While playing the violin, I made the following deduction. Mr. X was killed by some gorilla here in New York. Do you follow me? A gorilla was seen climbing up the Empire State Building with a girl in the palm of his hand. And is at present on the tower. How do you know? I saw the picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, now if he could climb up a building the size of the Empire State, why couldn't he have climbed up that penthouse and killed Mr. X? You mean the gorilla of King Kong? Of course, of course. Who else is covered with hair like that? George Bernard Shaw. Well, he didn't do it. <laughs> Well, here's the elevator. Hmm. What floor, Captain? 
Uh, we want to go to the tower. That's the 102nd floor, boy. Yes, 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 yes. I know that. Uh, when will we arrive? Sunday night, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Sherlock, that elevator boy looks very suspicious and very family, too. I think so. What's your name, son? My name's Jim Melton, sir. Oh, sure, Jimmy. He's our tenor of Oxen. Mm -hmm. Say, Jimmy, I hate to ask you this, but did you, uh, did you kill Mr. X? No, sir, I can't. I didn't kill him. I was a lady killer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Quick, Watson, the needle. Ow! And cut out those jokes, hmm? Well, we have two days in this elevator. Two days. Mm-hmm. I must keep my mind occupied. Mm hmm. Hand me my saxophone. That was Stormy Weather, brought to you through the courtesy of the Chevrolet Motor Company. On in second floor, all out. Hmm, hmm, Sunday got here quick. Mm. Now be careful, Watson, and very quiet. Very quiet. Please, follow me around the edge of the roof. We must use our wits and trap him. This fellow King Kong is the biggest creature you have ever seen. He eats elephants like you eat salami. With mustard? That's elementary, Watson. <laughs> come, come, follow me. What was that? The drummer just dropped the cymbal. Frank, keep the boys quiet, will you? Just a moment. Watson, don't move. It's so dark up here. Why didn't we come up here in the daytime? Quiet, quiet. Go ahead. I'm right behind you. I'd, I'd sooner be behind you. Watson, look. Look carefully. Carefully. Mm. You see that figure standing there in the doorway? Yes. Look, look. Somebody is handing him some money. Oh, that's Al Smith. He, he, you know, he runs this building and he's collecting the rent. Hello, Al! Ah, you, Jim. You're wrong again, wrong again, but. Hey, 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 what is that, Sherlock? Mm hmm, hmm. That's King Kong. He's here, all right. Keep down, Watson. He mustn't see us. Be careful, Sherlock. I think he sees us. Grab him, Watson, and don't let him get away. Thank you. <laughs> Look, look, he's got the girl right in the palm of his hand. It looks like Mary Livingstone. Wait, wait, it is Mary. Mary, Mary, what are you doing there with King Kong? There's something in his eyes that makes me realize he got me in the palm of his hand. The thrill of his Mary, up, we must rescue. We must rescue Mary from that brute. I'm not afraid of him. Hey, King Kong! What's the idea of climbing buildings and carrying women with you? Well, it feels a sport, and I just love the fresh air. <laughs> Is that King Kong? I'll get him. Wait, wait, Watson. It may be a trick. Now, look here, Kong. You've been climbing buildings, dragging people out of their beds and murdering them. Hmm, hmm. Did you climb up to the penthouse on Park Avenue and kill Mr. X? No. You lie. You did mur murder Mr. X. Why, you're big enough to eat him alive. Well, I did have eggs for breakfast this morning. Then you, uh, then you admit that you killed him. No, 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 no. Take him away. Take him away, Watson. Goodbye, Mary. I'm sorry. I can't play with you anymore. Goodbye, Paul and Harry. Come up again sometime. <laughs> well, well, it didn't take us long to get him, hmm, did it, Watson? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's that? It's me, the voice of the shadow. What do you want? You would think you've got the murderer. <laughs> well, King Kong did not kill Mr. X. Then who did? Mr. X was killed <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this mystery will be continued next Friday night. But there's no mystery about the Chevrolet motor car. It's the best buy in America today and the nation's choice. Play Frank. <laughs>
lover. Well, I first learned how to cook. They look so out of place without your smiling face. I'm a little second-hand car. I found a little arm chair and the all the other rug. The whole sofa where we used to kiss and hug. My Mary folks. No, so just be there, just and no one and no one there in a little second-hand car. Odds and ends. That we got from a friend How they thrill my heart I'm screaming Bring me back a day Spreading day and night When we said we'd never part I seem to hear them whisper You're to blame for you to wrong Why don't you kiss my dog Take us back where we belong It broke my heart to see The home you planned for me or hear the figures, 445 FOB Factory, always think, my friends, of Chevrolet, of the new Chevrolet Standard 6, the car that made $445 famous, of the smart, fast-stepping Chevrolet that gave a new meaning to 445 by giving so many wonderful new features for that wonderful low price. A Fisher body, a big, comfortable interior, Fisher no-draft ventilation, safety plate windshield glass, an octane selector, a low-to-the-road chassis that rides smoothly and steadily, and a six-cylinder valve and head engine that's not only one of the snappiest on the road, but listen to this. Some Chevrolet Standard 6 owners report gasoline mileages as high as 26 miles to the gallon, and nearly all of them are getting between 18 and 24, depending on how they drive. So if you have a minimum of money to spend on a new car and want that money to do you the most good, to bring you the most fun and the greatest savings in return, save with a new Chevrolet Standard 6, the big General Motors value that made $445 famous. Folks, this concludes our program for tonight. We sure and listen in next Friday. Try and figure out for yourself who killed Mr. X. Mary, Mary, hand me my violin. Mm-hmm. Mm. I must sing. Good night, folks. Good night. is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-O-S, New York.